If you believe in these false premises, and you probably do, then they are definitely stunting your growth and limiting your expansion. We're gonna debunk these false beliefs right after this. So stick around. What's up guys, Namo Himalaya. It's your boy Stefan from Shared Reality, here to help you take your dull drum day to day and turn it into your dream life. And today we're gonna do that by once again visiting the 22 flawed premises of Abraham, as presented by Esther Hicks. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, or you just need a refresher on numbers one through four, go ahead and pause this video, click right here, check out part one, and then rejoin us after you watch it, because we are gonna get right into it with flawed premise number five. Because I am older than you, I am wiser than you and therefore you should allow me to guide you. Now, society likes to tell us this one all the time. I certainly was told it a lot as a smart mouth kid. You might have been too. And that is the idea that with age comes wisdom. But that's not necessarily true. Sure, with age, you have more time on this earth to have these experiences that you remember in this lifetime and to hopefully learn and grow from those. But not everyone is as open-minded. Not everyone is available to be emotionally vulnerable and to have these experiences that help them grow and help them expand. You know, I'm sure we can all think of someone much older than us who maybe the years have not brought wisdom to. Maybe the years have brought pain and suffering and confusion and caused them to go further and further into their shell. You know, they're begrudgingly going through their day-to-day -day life, they're cynical, they're jaded. And I'm sure at the same time too, you might know a kid or certainly a young adult who's just like, wise beyond their years, and they really blow you away. And that's because wisdom does not come with age, it comes with alignment. And you can be aligned and within your vortex at any age. In fact, sometimes it's easier to be aligned when we're younger, because we don't have all that conditioning, all these other people's opinions weighing down on us. You know, a lot of the guidance that we get from our elders are people who aren't necessarily aligned themselves, and they're giving advice from a place of lack. So you're not gonna find abundance by following that advice. And it's well-intentioned. You know, they don't remember who they truly are as a divine creator, as a, a limitless being. And so they don't remember you as that either. So they think in the same way that they're vulnerable, you're vulnerable and they're only out to protect you. But you did not incarnate in this earth to live this cautious, scared life of what could be these physical consequences when you actually embody to be this abundant, divine, limitless creator. And so only take guidance from those that you really resonate with, that you really feel aligned to you, that are really living in a way that you want to emulate, and then you can take that advice into your own life. And that's regardless of how old the person is. And the reason age doesn't really matter with this is our sixth flawed premise. And that's the idea that who I am began the day I was born into my physical body. And that's not true. <laughs> you know, we say energy can never be created or destroyed. Therefore, you have no start, you have no end. You are part and parcel of the divine eternal, of this great source energy that always is, always will be, always was. You are an eternal being. That is how you are a spiritual being having a physical experience. So we think, oh, life is short, we only have this set amount of time because it's the only lifetime we remember. Now, some people can remember some of their past lives. Um, there are different techniques to try and draw that up, but the reason we inherently don't remember it, usually, is because it's not beneficial to us. Think of how much this conditioning weighs down on you that we've gotten just in our childhood in this lifetime. And think of all the experiences that have shaped us and some negatively impacted us, some made us go further into ourselves not in the positive meditative way, but in the, you know, pulling back from love and connection and hiding ourselves from other people type of way. And so you can imagine if you remembered all your past life experiences as well, how much of a hindrance that could be to your development. You know, we're working so hard to unlearn the negative things we've learned in this society. If we had to do it for all the other lifetimes we've lived too, it could be almost too much to handle. But there's a comfort in knowing that we've lived all these other lifetimes and that we'll forever continue on as well. Because then we know, okay, I was always existed, I've always been here. Then there is a part of me that is this eternalness. There's a part of me that has this innate wisdom. 
And that's what you can tap into when you really go internal, when you meditate, when you are aligning with source. You can tap into this knowledge that you've garnered over a lifetime, over the entire existence of anything. You can tap into that knowledge. But because we forget that, we often get so preoccupied with just trying to move matter with matter. That's what Joe Dispenza calls it a lot. You know, you can move from the quantum field or you can try and move matter to matter. And moving matter with matter is gonna be like Sisyphus rolling the fucking rock up the hill, right? It's gonna be difficult and it's gonna take a lot of time and it's probably not going to get you anywhere. And that's what flawed premise number seven is all about. It states with enough effort or hard work, I can accomplish anything. And while that sounds like it would be true, here's the mistake in that thinking. The stronger energy always wins. And as Abraham says, your physical action is never going to be as strong as your thought vibration. And so that thought vibration is always going to win out. You can't physically act your way out of a bad thought pattern. You can't unmanifest the negative with which you manifested by thought through action alone. I don't know if anyone else can relate with me on this. Uh, last month I was feeling, feeling pretty burned out. I don't know if it was just the way I was working or the energies in the air or what, but it just felt like I could stay up for like two nights in a row. I could keep working, just trying to cram work into every hour of every day. And it was just spinning the wheel. It was like not getting anywhere, like being on a hamster wheel, like just running harder and harder and harder and harder and still having nothing to show for it. You know, especially in 2022 with inflation, um, and just how expensive everything has gotten now. I'm sure you're feeling it too. Working harder than ever before, trying to bring in more money than ever before, and then still feeling like, man, I'm barely breaking even sometimes. So it can be very frustrating. And then we keep taking these actions, not seeing results, then you lessen your belief in yourself, then you wanna take less action, or you're taking less aligned action. And yet for some people, they seem to do nothing, and yet money just falls into their lap. So is that just luck, or what is that? that is being aligned with your vortex. The thing is, you can be the best athlete in the world, but you're never gonna win that championship if you don't believe you deserve it, if subconsciously you still have some blocks, if you are misaligned with your vortex, your purpose, your higher self. You can work and work and work and work, and it's not gonna get you anywhere because you don't actually have the capacity to receive that which you're asking for because you're not aligned you're not in harmony with yourself. You know, I saw a photo the other day, I actually shared it on my Instagram, um, but it was really inspiring to me and it was the perfect moment for me to see it. And it said, the universe doesn't want you to work harder. It wants you to trust it more. And that was something that I was like, ah, thank you. I needed, I needed to hear that because it was another one of those situations where just like staying up way longer than I should have, trying to get all this work done and feeling like I wasn't accomplishing anything. It's like, well, if I'm working as hard as I possibly can and have nothing to show for it, essentially, then how am I ever gonna get anything to show because I can't physically work harder? And that's the comfort in it, is that you don't need to work harder. You know, the universe just needs you to trust. So work smarter, take more aligned actions, and then have faith that that will work out and that you don't have to run yourself ragged to claim that which you deserve. And that's really the key to living an aligned, harmonious life in any situation. It's just to trust and to flow and to live in your vortex, live in alignment with that source energy. Which brings us to number eight, which is a flawed premise I see in practice all the time. And that's the idea that to be in harmony with one another, we have to want and believe the same things. You know, you see this all the time lately, people cutting people off very easily at the drop of the hat, left and right, you know, I don't want any toxicity in my life, I don't want any negativity in my life. And that's valid, you want to protect your energies, you don't have to deal with anything you don't want to. But, at the same time, just eliminating any annoyance or any trigger from your environment is not true peace. True peace is being able to hold that vibration, being able to hold that harmony in the face of adversity. You know, when it's actually tested <laughs> is when you will show your true vibrational frequency what level of peace and harmony you hold within yourself. Because remember, you can never be disharmonious with another person unless there is something unaligned within you. That's because everything we interact with 
everything that shows up in our environment is a direct reflection of our thoughts and our feelings. So it may not be on a conscious level, but every little annoyance we see in another person, everything that rubs us the wrong way, everything that triggers um, strong emotional reactions in us, that's because there's something unsettled and disharmonious with us, with you and you, you and source energy. Because when you're aligned, when you're within the vortex, you don't have those kind of questions, you don't have those kind of triggers, you don't have those kind of doubts, you don't have those kind of fears that make you have those strong emotional reactions. When you're grounded, there's just nothing to worry about. You're at peace. And that is the art of allowing. Being in that perfectly aligned, grounded state, so everything is harmonious, and no one else anything can do can affect you because you're not holding that energy with which to notice it and with which to attract it. And that is truly just bliss. Allowing is the best spot to be. Allowing your manifestations to come in as well as allowing everyone to be the very unique creator that they are without trying to put our own beliefs or judgments on that. It makes life so much easier and so much more enjoyable. So guys, that was part two of the 22 Flawed Premises series. Uh, that was numbers five through eight. I'm gonna be bringing you numbers nine through 13 on Monday, so stay on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video and for supporting my channel. I very much appreciate you. Literally, I have like a mic that's supposed to automatically turn on, um, so this is the second time I had to record this video because it did not automatically turn on. It sounded like a lot of this. <laughs> so, very, very much appreciate you guys taking the time out to watch this one as I put an undue amount of time into it. If you got anything out of this video, out of these 22 Flawed Premise series, please give me a like. It really helps the channel. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification too. So that is going to give you a little ding anytime I upload a new video so you are going to be the first to know. Thank you guys again for spending some time with me. I will see you on Friday and then on Monday for part three. Till next time, love you.